Hi, and good afternoon. It's Dean from Earth Star Observatory. Guys, we're going to be taking a look at the Earth's health at a glance. Uh, we've made an update onto the website today. If you want to go over there, you're more than welcome. There is more than just the data on the Earth's health. We've got the TriMag data, magnetosphere data, and a whole lot more. So there's plenty of anomalies for you to have a look at if you've got the interest. Um, big thanks to those few that have been supporting the observatory. And if you would like to, uh, you know, join in, the links are down there in the description. Uh, it's uh, entirely up to you and it's not mandatory. But, you know, we do uh, a little bit more than talk here at this observatory, as a lot of our subscribers already know. So let's get on with it. So at a glance, uh, the Earth's health. Um, right. First of all, as you probably already know, most of these uh, things we look at, uh, are the things that we have collected from our own equipment so you don't have to so we've got co2 um, meters that monitor atmospheric um, parts per million co2 we also have atmospheric oxygen sensors that detect uh, right down to you know four points if you like um, you know the amount of oxygen that is in our atmosphere as you can see Atmospheric CO2 is at 430 parts per million. Atmospheric C, uh, oxygen is at 21.18 parts, sorry, not parts per million, percentage. Uh, so it's quite a big reservoir in our atmosphere. A little bit lower down, you can see we've got the latest positions of the magnetic north pole, which are due to be updated in around about two weeks. Uh, you, as you can see, uh, the latest uh, information on active and erupting volcanoes is 26. The largest earthquake is in Greece, uh, measuring at 5.1. Uh, the muons per hour per square meter is at 512. And there is currently two sunspots on the solar disk or the sun at the moment. Uh, we've got a unsettled geomagnetic field and the X-ray count is normal. Um, as you can see, the jet streams if you've been following are unsettled or should I say um, unstable uh, and there we've got the uh, magnetometers that we've got out in the field as you can see Hong Kong is stable Canada is unstable that is because we've got a weakening intensity taking place at quite a quick rate I would say um, Canada so that's Canada the Gold Coast Australia is stable Perth Australia is stable Tucson Arizona is stable and the total magnetosphere strength is currently at 50 microteslas so that's the earth alpha at a glance guys um just wanted to quickly show you the jet streams on our planet because at the moment we've got one of the northern hemisphere around about 20 to 25 degrees uh, then if we go a little bit further up to 40 to 45 degrees we've got another one then if we go a little bit higher than that we've got one at probably 60 to 65 maybe 70 degrees it's unbelievable you know there it appears over the northern and southern hemispheres we've got multiple jet streams when we're only supposed to have two over the northern hemisphere and two over the south as you know the subtropical around 30 degrees and the polar jet stream at um, uh, 60 degrees as you can see it's not the case I'm just going to take a quick spin around the world so you can see the condition of the jet streams both over the northern hemisphere and southern hemispheres of the planet. Just overlooking the northern hemisphere now, down on the jet streams. unbelievable isn't it you know the changes that are taking place on our planet are nothing but in short shocking and by all accounts they're going to get worse than this guys because as I've said many times you know we're not at equilibrium yet and we know uh, one of the major causes of the uh, malfunctioning and breaking down of our jet streams on our planet is uh, because we are in a moment where the magnetic poles are reversing and the magnetosphere has weakened 
and more cosmic radiation is inbound, causing the jet streams to become more laden with water as a result of cloud seeding and then fragmenting. Uh, in some cases we get super jet streams, in other cases we get jet streams from the polar region fracturing, coming down into the subtropical and vice versa, both over the northern and southern hemisphere. And that's what's delivering these you know, record-breaking weather anomalies that we're seeing in mainstream media. Something that I've been talking about over the last few days is the glacial and interglacial cycles. And we're looking at the chart of uh, glacial and interglacial cycles over the last 450,000 years. But if you concentrate on what is happening close to today's time, you will see that uh, there is a sine wave which is jotting up and down, but is starting to fall closer to that line where it passes from the interglacial period, which is what we're in right now, into a glacial period, which means that global temperatures are going to start to fall at some point. And I'm a little bit concerned, not overly concerned, but a little bit concerned that the magnetic reversal will have an impact in speeding this process up. Um, and, you know, the reason why I say that is because if we add more water vapour into the atmosphere, we block out more sunlight and therefore less solar radiation he heats the surface of our planet and as a result it cools. So, you know, we will start to see CO2 levels uh, decline uh, because, you know, global temperatures are what drive CO2 levels in that you know when the seas are hotter they will release more co2 into the atmosphere and when they cool down they are able to hold more co2 so you know when we look at um, interglacial cycles over a period of time compared with co2 rises and falls every time the temperature starts to decline and we go back into a glacial period uh, co2 dramatically falls at that point in time so you know they talk about global warming and greenhouse gases they talk about co2 and that it's man-made climate but they fail always and every time to talk about the most abundant greenhouse gas in our atmosphere and how that can have significant effects on our climate and of course i'm talking about the water molecule h2o yes it's a greenhouse gas if you didn't know and it's probably one of the most well, it is the most abundant um, greenhouse gas in our atmosphere, yet it is not responsible for driving the temperatures up like, you know, the Al Gore's of this world claim. Guys, I'll keep it short and sweet. Uh, there's a link down there. I would really like to see a few more people step up and come forward and help what we do here at the observatory. You know, we're trying to be a little beacon of light and, you know, shine a bit of truth in the scientific world. Um, out there to you guys and keep you informed of not just the rarest anomaly that's taking place like uh, the pole shift but other anomalies as well and just bring your attention once again to how close we are into going back into a glacial period and just have in the back of your thoughts how they was affected over in Texas during that cold snap that they experienced a couple of weeks ago so just bear these things in mind, you know, they really are happening. They really do affect um, a lot of people on this planet. And climate change is real and it's largely due to the jet streams, not like, you know, mainstream would have you think, down to man putting more CO2 into the atmosphere. So with that, guys, the link's down there, you know, would love to see a few more people come forward. And, you know, I'll just say what I usually do, you know, take care of your loved ones and as always, Bye for now.